What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Barber Block Podcast, AZ. And today we have another great guest, as always. Uh, please help me welcome to the podcast, Blanca Ramirez. Thank you. Thank Hi. you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for stopping by. How are you today? I'm doing very good. All right. So, you know, just, just kind of tell you how this goes, you know, just relax. You know, let all the nerves go. We're just going to talk. Pretend the camera's not there or pretend it's there, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going to have a conversation and just talk about you. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump right into it and uh, just tell us where you're from. I am uh, originally from Mexico. Yeah. Yes. And how long have you been in the States? Um, about 25 years, I think. 25 years. Yes. Okay. And so when you when you came to the U.S., what was... Uh, that process? What did you go through to get to the U.S.? Well, my father is a U.S. citizen. Okay. So I just moved to... Just came on over. To, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no traumatic story. <laughs> no, no, not that traumatic. Okay. It was traumatic a little bit. Yeah, I leaving grew up family. with my grandparents. Yeah. And I had to move to Arizona yeah. uh, with my mom. Yeah. And uh, I never lived with my mom before. Uh, I lived with her maybe like a year uh, my whole life. Oh, wow. So moving with my mom was moving, like, with the aunt. Uh, like, the yeah. aunt that lives far. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you grew up with your, your grandparents, and uh, um, so your mom was already in the States then? Yes, my okay. mom lived here. So, okay. Yeah. And then, so so how was that, making that adjustment, coming to the States, had to really kind of re build a relationship now with your with your parents? Yes. Uh, it was hard. Um when I uh, moved to the States, I moved because my grandparents um, saw that I was already a teenager. I guess they didn't want the responsibility of dealing with a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my grandma wanted me to learn English, so uh, she wanted me to study here. Okay. And that's why she decided to talk to my mom and say, hey, I think it's time for her to, to, to live come, with you now. To go there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. And so your mom was all about it, and uh, where were they were here in Arizona already? Yes, they they used to live in Phoenix. In Phoenix, okay. Yes. So you get get to the states, you know. Tell us what was that adjustment like for you? Well, I kept telling my mom that I was going to be here for a year, and that I was going to move back to my grandparents. <laughs> 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 so I I did not like it here. Yeah. Um, I have always been a very good student, so I went straight to high school, ninth yeah. grade. Yeah. Um, and I just learned yeah uh, I didn't learn much English in high school because um, they have a class for um, non-English speakers and yeah. um, everything else was in Spanish so I didn't really learn any English during yeah. high school but uh, I went through it <laughs> so after that first year uh, how, did, how did were you did you make the decision to stay or were you like no I'm going I'm going back or what how did that work out? Well, I met my husband. Oh, <laughs> so wow! That um, uh, I had I cr I found a friend. She became my best friend. Uh -huh. She's my friend until now. She's uh -huh. still my best friend. Wow! And uh, I created very close relationships with her yeah. and uh, with my current husband. Oh wow! Yes. Wow. Okay. So it was a love story since the ninth grade, huh? Yep. Okay. So, all right. So your relationships kept you here. You decided not to go back to Mexico. You get through high school. Uh, you're with the love of your life. You still have the best friend. What did? How did you get into barbering? What was that decision? Well, my husband was at that time in barber school. Okay. And uh, he kept telling me about his school because he would just go to high school in the morning and then go in the afternoon to to the barber school. Uh huh. Um, so he would just rush to see me for a couple minutes after school because his school was like until like eight p.m. Uh huh. Uh, and I was only allowed to see him before nine. So he had to rush and see me for like a couple minutes. <laughs> that was the household rules that <laughs> yes. you had to be in before yes. nine. Um, and he wasn't allowed to be visiting yeah. late either. Yeah. So he rushed to see me for a few minutes. And that's how we did it for, for some months. And, uh, and then later I told him that since I was little, I wanted to do hair. Uh -huh. At that time, I didn't know the difference between barbering and cosmetology i didn't mm -hmm. know to me everything was the same uh -huh. so at that time we were already probably i'll say like eight months into the relationship mm -hmm. and uh, he went and talked to his parents about me wanting to go to school 
Mm. And for some reason, which I still don't understand, his parents went and signed me up for barber school. His parents signed you up for barber school. Signed me up for barber school. Wow, so you must have held a special place in their heart in those (laughs) short eight months you guys uh, were dating. So Yes. Uh, so they clearly they saw something in you or the the potential and they wanted to invest in you. Um, you know, is that is that typical in the culture or no? no? I still don't understand yeah. how that happened or yeah. like now when I talk to them, they just told me that it was like they they don't they don't know still like yeah. they don't know how they made the decision to yeah. actually want paid for my school. And they paid for it. Signed you up and paid for it. Yes, they paid. Well, not for the whole course. Yeah. They paid for half of it. And then uh, by the time I was half into school, my husband started paying for for the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point did you all get married? How old were you? I was 15. You were 15? Yeah, when we moved in together. So was that when you were in barber school? You were already married? or Yes. Wow. What was that like being married at such a young age? 15. Um, you think you're old when you're little. <laughs> you don't know how old you are, really. Yeah. Um, I see my kids now, and, and they're babies. Yeah. My daughter is 18. Yeah. My son is 16. Yeah. And I don't see him. Being married yeah, like no, you. <laughs> not, none of that. I don't see anything. Like, they are babies. Yeah, yes. yeah. So did you, was it, um, like, easy for your parents to approve of that, or how? Well, in our culture, um, not now, but at that time, mm-hmm. it was very common to see people getting married at that age. Okay. Very, very common. Now, things have changed since social media and all the new generations. They're, they're different now. It's different. But yeah. at that time, it was pretty normal. Yeah. And is he the same age as you, or is he a little bit older? or? He's uh, a year older now. A year older. So you were both young. Very. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. Six, so 16 or 15, you get married. His parents pay for you to go to halfway to uh, half pay or whatever to get you into barber school. Were you at the same school he was at? or Yes. Okay. Had he finished school at that time when you started or you were both there together? No, he was already a barber. He was I already had- a barber. And so you come into the school and now you're working on your barbering license. And what which shop is he working at? Is he close by or? Um, no, he was close by uh, to home. But not okay. to the barber school. The barber school I went to, uh, Latin style. Mm-hmm. In Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he used to work at a barber shop in the west side of me, uh, Phoenix, mm-hmm. uh, called Ray's Barber Shop. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so at the time you guys are living together, you're married, you're living together. Are you living? You have your own place, or you're living with parents, or? The first year we live with his parents. Yeah. And the second year we moved out. So you guys are full fledged adults at seventeen. And 18. And 18. Yes. You have your own place. You're in school. And he's already started in his career. Wow, that's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear those I stories. I don't recommend it to anyone, okay? <laughs> so were there any, uh, 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 you said your kids are 18. I don't know how old you are now, but, you know, were there, did you, What at what age did you start having children? I had my daughter a year after I got married. Oh, wow. I was 16. Oh, wow. Okay. So I could do the calculations, but I won't. I won't say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So as a young couple, you've got your first child. Man, uh, what was that like? Was that a struggle, or you know, did you did you have support from the family, or how did you guys just manage the day to day? We have a lot of support from our families. Yeah. Uh, mostly his family. I, I don't have a large family here mm-hmm. uh, in Arizona. Yeah. But uh, I we did have lots of support from both families. With yeah. The, with my daughter and with everything. Like our first apartment, my father-in-law went and signed for it because we were too young to even rent that apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and, and you guys were in Phoenix at that time, yeah? Yes. Okay, so you get through barber school, you graduate. Well, you know, how long did it take you to finish barber school? Uh, I went to barber school for um, about 11 months or 10 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I graduated quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, what was it like getting into that first shop, stepping out? Where, where you, did you go to the same shop your husband was at, or did you go somewhere else? Um, actually, I did not want it to be a barber. <laughs> so you got your license, and you decide, okay, I don't want to be a barber. What do you do? Well, um, I didn't work for the first year. Okay. But, well, I was in barber school. I realized that I was at the wrong place because originally I wanted to be a cosmetologist, not okay. a barber. Oh, okay. So when I started barber school, uh, the first month or so i thought it was just part of you know the beginning Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And later in until uh, as I was seeing how, you know, we were only getting male clients and, mm. you know, beard shapes and stuff like that. I was thinking, I think this is the wrong place. <laughs> uh, so I started asking and uh, and I found out that it's a whole different animal. Yeah. Um, barbering and cosmetology. So uh, I told my mother-in-law that I didn't like it and I don't want to do that. That was not for me. Yeah. Um, so she's like, well, we already paid for some of it. Just finish it if you don't want to finish. Uh, if you don't want to work on it, um, you don't have to. At least you finished the school. Yes. Yeah. So I just did it to not disappoint her because they were yeah. very uh, influential. Yeah. 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 So you, you, you get the, the license. You're home for a year. Is that, were you working at that time or you just were a stay-at-home mom? or a stay-at-home mom with okay. my daughter. Okay, cool. And then what, what was that transition point that you decided that, you know what, I got to go back to work? Or how did that happen? Well, my husband worked um, until um, my daughter was about a year old uh, in the barbershop. And while he was working there, my in-laws were helping him opening a barbershop. Okay. And so we opened the uh, first barbershop in Mesa mm-hmm. uh, with my in-laws' help. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went back to work because... He opened the barber shop and he needed barbers, so I went to work with him. And what was that shop called? It was. Uh, it's still called Manny's Barber Shop. Manny's Barber Shop. And so, what year are we talking that that happened? Two thousand and five. Two thousand and five. Okay, so you opened the first shop, two thousand five, Manny's in Mesa. And uh, are you? Do you? Did you feel like you were forced to go back, or did you want to go back just to help him or support him, or? How did you feel? Well, I wanted to get out of the house. <laughs> and I wanted to spend more time with my husband because uh, he was all day at the barbershop. Yeah. And I think I needed a little bit of time to go out uh, of the house because with my daughter, I was 100% around her. Yeah. Like there was nothing for me. No time. No, no break. Nothing. But yeah. it wasn't something that I wasn't enjoying. Right. I love, like, I would change her clothes seven times a day and, like, <laughs> I'll be, like, on top of her, just looking at her, taking video of her. Like, I was all about her. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I felt like I needed, you know, to go out and do something else, too. Yeah. Um, she was, um, I think she was nine months old when we opened the first uh, shop. Yeah. And I didn't work right away. I think I, um, my husband started with another barber. And then I went in like a few months after that. Okay. And so being a part of that team and especially in the barbershop where it's mostly men, men, male clients, male barbers, what was that experience like? How did it feel being, were you the only woman in the, in the shop working? And I was not the only woman. Uh, There was another one in me at the beginning, but uh, until now Mm -hmm. being in this, in this line of work, it's very challenging mm-hmm. uh, when you're a woman. Yeah. Yes. So what, what makes it challenging? What, what were some of the things you had to face being a woman? Um, the clients, uh, the people in general, mm-hmm. people assume that a barber must be a male. Mm. And it's just um, something, I guess, traditional. Yeah. Uh, in the old times, barbers were typically males. Yeah. Um, so until now, uh, there is the stigma of the women can't cut men's hair. Mm. Um, so during the whole time that I've been a barber, I have always experienced that. And to me, it's been a challenge. Yeah. For me, challenges are great because it makes me better. Yeah. I don't see a picky customer as a bad customer. Okay. I see a picky customer as a person that's polishing me, make me a better barber. Okay. Yeah. So you see it as a challenge that you got to figure out how to overcome it. So what 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 do you think it was that you did that um, that helped you overcome um, that challenge of like, you know, being persistent? But, you know, were there times that, you know, were your feelings ever hurt? Did they say something that just like, man, that just crushed me or, you know, and how did you get through those moments? Well, um, I have always had my husband next to me. Yeah. So that gives me a lot of um, confidence. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing I uh, always follow was, uh, because I love challenges, mm-hmm. uh, my biggest challenge in the barbershop was my husband. Mm. And I had him there. He wasn't only my challenge, but he was also my support. So right. if I um, if I needed help with a haircut or I didn't understand something, mm. uh, he will always help me. Yeah. And um, all I know is because he taught me how to cut hair. Because, I mean, going from barber school, not liking it, 
Yeah. And then being at home one year, you know, <laughs> it's not like I knew much right. uh, after graduating and, and being at home all that time. Yeah. So um, he's been my biggest challenge and also my biggest support. <laughs> so every time a customer come in and they're like, oh, no, I want to sit with Manny. Uh, they all wanted to see with Manny because the big name outside was Manny's Manny. barbershop. Yeah. And, and he was an amazing, he is still an amazing barber. He's mm -hmm. a barber instructor as well. Yeah. Um, um, to me, was like, well, I need to steal those clients from him. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're, you're in the shop. Everything's going good. Working with the hubby. And, uh, you know, what at what point, what was the next step that you guys decided to take in business? So you're in business together and you're like, okay, what's next? Um, we were very young, so mm -hmm. a lot of the things we did were not the right things, mm -hmm. according to uh, no business. Yeah. Um, for example, when we started making money, first thing we did when we bought a car, we mm -hmm. went and bought a house when the housing market was almost crashing. We bought our house in 2007, yeah. at the middle oh. of 2007. Oh, so you, at a good time. <laughs> yes. Everything was cheap. No, yeah. we got it right before. Oh, right before the down. crash. It yes. Crashed, oh, uh, January of 2008. Eight. You're right. And we got our keys, I think, July of 2007. Seven. A very small house, extremely expensive. Mm. Um, we could barely afford it at yeah. that time. Yeah. And, um, and then we lost it. Yeah. We lost our car. We lost our house. The, um, the barbershop, you know, lost a lot of clients. A lot of people moved out of state. Yeah. So it was a big downside. Um, yeah. But um, we we were young yeah. and we were spending our money like the way we were getting it. So <laughs> as um, fast as it came, uh, you spent it just as fast. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. We always had our uh, parents support. Mm -hmm. So if we had any questions or anything that now at that time we wanted to do whatever we want. Right. And you're that age. You do. You don't want to listen you're grown. to your parents. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or um, you think you're grown. <laughs> yes. But after after we went through that, we yeah. realized that our parents will always have the best advice for you. Yeah. Like nobody's gonna have the most selfless advice for you than your, your parents. parents. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So since then we always take their advice for. Even for small things. Oh, yeah. we're going to go travel somewhere. We're going to buy something that is not very expensive or big. Yeah. Yeah. Or not a big commitment, but we always take their advice. Yeah. Um, so that helped us grow. Yeah. That helped us a lot. What were some of the lessons when it came to um, business that you had to learn real fast? You know, it, it, you were spending the money that you were making, but what were some of the things that you had to put in place or things you had to learn to not make that mistake again? Um, to not, like, make the mistake of spending the money. So right, like, yeah. I still spend the money really quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Investment. Investments. Investments. Okay. So um, don't put all your, uh, and this is something my husband would say, or he says all the time, don't put all your eggs in the same basket. Right. Um, I didn't understood that mm -hmm. uh, for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about, okay, if I'm making money, I'm going to save it. I'm mm. going to store it, and, mm. you know, nobody's going to grab it. But the thing with money is that if you're not moving your money, it's just running there. It's mm -hmm. not doing It's anything. losing value. Yes. Yeah. So um, we've just been trying to invest in uh, different businesses or other things. Yeah. So you're still spending the money. It's just you're spending it in a different way. In a different uh, way. Things that will bring you more money yes. in the future. But at the same time, I think that you need to enjoy your life. Yeah. And that is something that you learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, my husband and I love to travel. Yeah. That's our favorite thing. We don't care about expensive clothes or yeah. jewelry or purses or shoes or any yeah. of that. We don't yeah. care about any of those things. Yeah. But we do and love enjoy traveling, traveling a lot. Yeah. So we travel and I remember my mother in law telling me, Blanca, you guys need to save money. You can't be spending everything in travel. <laughs> and and I was like, Well, we thought when we called her Wita. Mm. My mo my daughter didn't know how to say abuelita, which uh, is grandma in Spanish. Yeah. So she called her Wita. And then we, we all called her Wita. Yeah. So I told her, well, when we travel, I come back with a lot of energy to make more. And I feel like every time I'm gone, I come back and I'm more productive. I uh, do more with my time yeah. than when I'm just like doing it every day. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, she thought uh, we were crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then later on, they started traveling with us, my in-laws. Yeah. So everywhere we go, they were like, uh-uh, 
We're going. <laughs> we're <with> going you. <laughs> to. Yes. So they started traveling with us. We had such amazing trips. Yeah. With them. That's awesome. That's awesome. You get along with your in laws. Yeah. Uh, so that that that's pretty cool. You don't hear that story too much from a, a lot of married couples that you know that the in laws can be an issue. <laughs> They're like my parents. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so so after traveling, you know, okay, so we we're building the business. You're building the business. At what point did you guys to start? What was the next step? The barber school, or what? What was after? Well, you know, getting um, the shop built. When the barber shop, uh, the first barber shop we have, uh, we had, um, we couldn't fit there anymore. Uh, mm. We were growing, but the space was small. It was our first. Uh, mm-hmm. spot we didn't have a uh, space to grow there we decided to move and that's when we moved to extension the location mm-hmm. is bigger yeah so we put in more stations and we hire more barbers we were doing very very good over there mm-hmm. uh, but then we encountered the biggest problem barbershops have it's finding barbers finding barbers finding so you, barbers. You, you had enough chairs but uh, not enough not people. enough people yeah. or barbers will come in and then some barbers they didn't even know how to hold a straight razor on their hand and those are things that you as barber think how can this be a barber yeah this person doesn't even know how to hold a straight razor yeah. um you know um or for example fading the line for the balding mm-hmm. the, that is the easiest part of barbering <laughs> The Cold. basics. That's the basic because yeah. uh, one of the toughest part in barbering is obviously clipper will comb, more sculpting of the haircut by yourself than yeah. the clipper doing the job itself. Right. Uh, so those are little things that we saw in barbers that were hard to um, help them with. Mm-hmm. Not because it's impossible. It's because when a barber already has a license, it's very hard for you to tell the barber, hey, you need to work on this or I can mm. teach you this mm. because barbers have this big ego that they mm. think they already know their yeah, license. Their license yeah. contains all the knowledge that mm. they need in life. And it's not true. After right. 20 years in this business, I'm learning. Every single day I learn. I learn from my students. Yeah. So if if I can learn from my <clears throat> students, why don't a barber allow other barber to teach them some knowledge yeah. and to share that with them? Because if I'm willing to share knowledge with you, yeah. you should be happy. Yeah. But some people don't like to, like to, to, share. to share. Yeah. 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 So when we saw that we couldn't find barbers or those that we found were incapable of at least doing a neck shave, um, that's when my husband said, you know what, I think we should go and get our instructor's license and open mm. a barber school so we can make our own barbers. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we did. Uh, we went back to school. Yeah. Uh, we did our 500 hours. Uh, Together. To, uh, we did it at a different pace. Different like, pace. Okay. Like you'll go. Uh, two days, I'll go three days, and then the next week he'll go, you know, like, we'll switch. Because so, you still have to keep the shop running. Yes, so yeah. somebody stayed at the shop, and the other person was at school at the same time. Gotcha, yes. gotcha. Yeah. So how long did it take you to complete those 500 hours? About almost a year. A year, yeah. okay. It was slow. <laughs> <laughs> but you got it done. Yes. Yeah, yes. and so at that time, what? how old were you all? You were still pretty young. I was 23 years old. 23, yes. yeah. And uh, it was... Very good. And I recommend to anyone that wants to be an instructor, go back to school. Mm-hmm. Their license doesn't mean anything. It's just a piece of paper. Right. You need to go back to school because you need the training, not from another instructor, which is great, obviously, but you need the training with the students. You need to mm. see the students, how they, how you interact with the students and how they pick up the information mm. because um, it's not the same owning a barbershop and teaching the barber that already had that foundation, the new skills, than putting brand new skills in someone that has never touched a clipper in their life. They don't even know how to turn on the clipper. Right. <laughs> so you have to teach them how to turn on the clipper. Yeah. You have to teach them how to adjust their clippers because sometimes clippers come uh, out of the factory not working properly. Right. So all those little things you have to teach a person that has never, ever hold a clipper on their hand. Yeah. And it's very, very good to do the 500 hours um, to be an instructor because that gives you the knowledge to understand students. Yeah. Students that have never, ever been gotcha. in this. Yeah. Yeah. So it gives you another, uh, adds to your foundation of not only, you know, more knowledge about barbering, but also how to teach students. Yes. And how, how to, be to identify in a, all the learning styles. Everyone learns differently. differently. 
Yeah. Yes. Everyone is different. Yeah. We are all different. We yeah. learn different. You know, yeah. you might be more hands on. I might be more into reading and understanding after I read and I, I see the book, I read it and I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, I already read it three times. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But then you see someone give you an example of how yeah. to do this and you're like, oh, perfect. And you go and do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So after, okay, you complete your 500 hours and, uh, you know, what was it like getting the school off the ground? It was very, very hard. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we did our 500 hours. We went and took our tests. Mm-hmm. We did pass our test first time. The try. first time? Nice. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And at that time, it was uh, Joyce and, and Big Sam mm-hmm. and, uh, and Sammy. Uh, they were at the board. Um, Sam and Joyce went to visit us the next day, and they said, congratulations, guys. You are yes. now licensed barber instructors nice. go pick up your license at the the board's office yeah. so we went and pick up the license we were like hey, <laughs> that. yeah so um and the exam was fun too yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um so after we got our licenses obviously our our idea was to open a barber school yeah. um we didn't had that much to invest into a new location, but our, our school is, our barbershop is very large. Big enough, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. so at that time, uh, we were allowed to put in uh, a section on the side for the students, mm. and uh, we opened the barber school with no students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our first students was my brother, uh, my brother-in-law, Danny, mm-hmm. and his wife, uh, Bere, uh-huh. and they were our first students, but we couldn't both be instructors for two students that were our family members that we weren't charging for them. <laughs> so I stayed as a barber. Yeah. I continued working as a barber while my husband took over the barber the instructor uh-huh. part. Yep. And, um, well, he was obviously very dedicated to his two students. Mm-hmm. Uh, for about six to eight months, we had no other students signing up. Mm. People asking, but nobody signing no up, really. Signing up, yeah. about, about five months in, my husband said, you know what? I think this was a bad idea. Ah. I'm a little frustrated because, because um, you know, I thought it was going to be a little bit easier mm-hmm. to get in a couple of students um, to the school. Um, we're not very social. Like, we're not into, like, knowing a lot of people. We know a lot of barbers, but we're not, like, going out with them or anything like that. We're more, like, with our kids and more family-orientated, so we yeah. never actually went and met, like, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Um, I told my husband that I think he already went this far and I think we can do it. Yeah, because no turning back. <laughs> the thing with me is that I'm very, very stubborn to give up. Okay. Even if I see that the things are going wrong, yeah. oh my gosh, it takes me, I A really have to see, like, prove that it's all wrong <laughs> and it's, there's no, no you know, way out yeah. to actually give up. Yeah. It's hard for me to give up. It's also hard for me to jump. My husband is the one that, jumps he's like yes let's do this and he jumps yeah and i'm like hold on <laughs> yes like i start freaking out and making numbers and see where are we gonna get you know the money from and do all those things yeah um but uh but once we're in i'm very You're very stubborn yeah. yes uh, so i told them i think you should you know try a little longer yeah. and after that conversation probably less than a month after we started we got our first student and then the next one and by the end of the first year, yeah. we had the school completely full. Oh, wow. Yes. And, That's a great uh, story. Man. And we were ready to open our actual school, school location, which is the one on Dobson. So, okay, so you got that full, and then you said, okay, we need a different space yes. for the school. So you immediately opened up the Yes, the we other started space. looking for a spot. Um, my husband has a friend. Did you all have a waiting list at that time, or...? I don't remember if we had a waiting list, but um, I don't think we had a waiting list. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we opened the uh, school in Dobson, Mm -hmm. uh, we started with four students uh, signed up. Mm -hmm. And... um, and I remember uh, the the whole um, layout was for 14 stations, mm-hmm. and I only ordered seven because I didn't want to invest in all of them just yet. Okay. So when we opened the door, we had enough people signed up, um, like probably a week into the opening. Mm-hmm. When, once we were open up a weekend, people signed up so much that I, we were like, okay. So we ordered <laughs> the rest of the stations. So we opened in September, and by December, we already had the 14 stations, not full. Not full, but okay. not, not full, but we had the 14 stations because we were already more than halfway full. 
Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. So now, uh, how long did you did it take to continue to build to get to where you are now? Because now I, you know, here you guys have waiting lists, and it might be six months before you can even get in. But uh, you seem to be a very popular school that uh, a lot of people want to go to. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we work by uh, an idea that whatever you do, do it right. Yeah. Or don't do it at all. Don't, don't do get it at yourself all. into something that you're not going to put your heart and soul in. Yeah. Um, well, it took us many years, and uh, we don't do shortcuts. We are a school that we put everything in. Yeah. Um, and uh, we are very family orientated. Yeah. So the whole idea of the school is that everyone has to be respectful with yeah. others, with the clients. And uh, everything I know, I give to my students. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, ha- you have a, I don't know if you know, well, the reputation I hear. Okay. <laughs> that I am mean. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily mean. It's like, don't mess with Blanca. You know what I mean? Like, you are not to be messed with, like, you're going to get them, get them right. Um, but they appreciate that because they know they're coming out of school with all the knowledge that they need uh, of, you know, that you guys impart in them so that they're, they're prepared for their next step. So, you know, we get, you know, in our store, we get a lot of your students that um, either, either while they're in school or, are, oh, yeah, I went to Mesa Barber College. You know, so they, um, so we know. You know, yeah. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Leonetti's Barber Supply. We've been in the barber supply business since 1968, helping barbers deliver their best haircuts. We're located at 1633 East McDowell Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85006. We've got everything you need. We've got your clippers, we've got your trimmers, we've got your disinfectants, everything you need to help you deliver your best haircut. Now let's get back to this episode. Um, students uh, that go to my school, sometimes they tell me, oh, um, when I was coming to school, but I was a, li- a little scared because yeah. people told me that you were tough. And <laughs> but I'm not. I'm very friendly with everybody. And uh, as a matter of fact, I keep a friendly relationship with most of my students. Well, those who want to continue being my, my friends, obviously. Yeah. Uh, when they are in school, my students, um, I don't uh, have a personal relationship with them at of any kind, yeah. social media or outside of school. Yeah. It's strict uh, professional yeah. at school. They're my students. Yeah. But after they graduate, uh, most of them continue being my friends. Yeah. And, and I tell them when they're in school because sometimes they're like, oh, can we follow you on social media? Yeah. Like my personal. Yeah. I said, once you graduate, you can. Yeah. And, and we can be friends. And, yeah. and I love my students. They're amazing mm. Yeah. Uh, I do have a very good relationship with a lot of them, yeah. uh, friend relationship. Yeah, I think that's a, a good policy to have. My wife is in education, uh, actually in the Mesa School District. And so that was her policy, too. You know, her students wanted to try and find her on Facebook, Instagram. And she was like, no, I'm not going to accept your friend request while you're still a student. But after you graduate, you know, then I'll go ahead and do that. So you got to you got to graduate first. Yes. <laughs> and I think uh, friends do other friends favors mm. and they break rules and laws yeah. for their friends because yeah. when you're a friend you do everything for your friend right yeah and you try to do uh or or be more like uh, personal with your friend yeah. um but i feel like that would break that professional um mm. you know atmosphere that i yeah. have in school yeah. my husband is the same way he's very straightforward and um he's uh he keeps his personal life completely separated. separate uh, one thing that I tell my students is that no matter what is going on at home, and I tell them because this is going to help them not only in the school, but in their professional life when they graduate, mm-hmm. you can't bring your problems to your share. You have to leave them at home. Yeah. And I tell them, no matter what I'm going through at home, as soon as I cross this door, yeah. I'm Blanca, the instructor, the owner of the school, the one that has to have the best face for the clients, for the students, and I'm here yeah. to teach you. You know, how am I going to teach you if I'm crying or like in a bad mood because I had a fight with my husband? You know, as soon as I walked out of the door, yeah. if I'm mad at my husband, I'm mad again. You know? yeah. Yeah. But, but as soon as I enter the door again in the school, all of that goes away. Everything has to stay outside. Yeah. And that is something that was that is very helpful to me. Yeah. And it should be helpful for other people that are in the industry. Yeah. Because you can't bring your problems to work. Yeah, your because clients, that, that person sitting in the chair is going to tell you about all their problems, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly, and, and you're going to be like, me too. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> no, you have to be their your, their support because yeah. what are we? We're psychologists. Yeah. We are, you know, they're therapists. Yeah. Uh, my father-in-law, um, sometimes he uh, sit a client on his chair because my father-in-law is a barber as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I, I, when I used to work with him, he used to work with us in the barbershop and I was like, oh my gosh, you need to start charging by the hour <laughs> because, <laughs> because the, the client will be telling him all their all life the drama, and yeah. everything. And they feel like my father-in-law it, it has that, that vibe that makes you feel so comfortable with him. Mm-hmm. Like people that, that I know, like, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Maribel from, uh, Johnny V. Yes. Yes. Um, I was very surprised because I went to a class, uh, and then she told me, how's your father-in-law? And I'm like, oh, he's doing great. And he's like, she's like, oh my gosh, he's so peaceful. He reminds me so much of my grandpa, she said, because she said that when, when she goes to the barbershop, he inspires so much like peace yeah. and like, you know, that. Yeah. So um, I think that's a very good quality yeah. on a barber. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so uh, being now that you are got to school, uh, what, what are some of the other endeavors that you have jumped into? Well, my husband loves to cook. Mm -hmm. He's been cooking delicious food since ever. And my mother-in-law used to tell me that he used to cook since he was very little, but she hated the mess that he left in the kitchen. (laughs) So he wasn't allowed. (laughs) Uh, But since I met him, see, he always told me he wanted to open a restaurant. His Mm. favorite food is carne asada. Mm. Carne asada, it's his favorite food in the world. Um, Mm. A few years ago, maybe like five years ago or so, um, he told me, you know what, Blanca, I know you don't, because he's been telling me he wanted to open a barbershop since ever, I um, mean, a restaurant, restaurant since ever. And I was like, nope, we don't know <laughs> anything about restaurants. No. So I was like, no, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't know. We don't know anything about that industry. And um, about six years ago, he's like, Blanca, I'm opening a restaurant with or without your support. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he's like, I'm doing it. <laughs> and obviously, he always has my support. And right. um, so we jumped in. He jumped in, and I was just, like, looking at <laughs> him. <laughs> and um, it was uh, very challenging. Yeah. Extremely challenging. Yeah, restaurant business is really tough. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's really yeah. tough. I mean, you do a haircut, and, and you keep 60% of your profits when you don't know how to cut hair. <laughs> and in the restaurant industry, the, the profit margin is, is so oh. small. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to get nothing yeah. out of the industry. Yeah. Um, so uh, he decided to open a bar, um, I mean, a barbershop um, restaurant, uh, which we call them carne asada because yeah. it's his favorite food. And um, it's been tough. Um, yeah. We have succeeded, I can say, because the restaurant's still there. Still there. Yeah. Yes, five years later. Uh, <laughs> Where's the restaurant located? Uh, the restaurant is on Dobson and Main. It's called Carne Asada. You can find them on social media as Carne Asada is it, Girls. That, is, that's the one next to the school, right? Next to the school. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. next door. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I get lunch every day. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the people that work there tell me, Blanca, you haven't, you haven't come to eat. And I said, it's because all of your food makes me fat. <laughs> I love it. I love eating there every day. Yeah. And um, I try to stay away because I love the aguas frescas. Mm. And as so much sugar. And my doctor already told me I have to cut down. Cut back on the sugar. <laughs> the sugar. Yeah, yeah. So what, what other, any other adventures or uh, adventures that you all are into? You got the, you got the barbershop, you got the school, you now have the restaurant, what else? Well, we just recently opened a, um, another barber school on the east side of Mesa. Uh, we opened. Uh, oh, two I saw weeks that. Ago. I did see that that post. Yeah, it was yes. off of Ellsworth. Ellsworth and Maine. Ellsworth and Maine. Yes. Okay, so it's like northeast. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's just by my house. So. <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> I still drive all the way to Dobson. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, how what has that process been like? Have you is it uh, is it up and running now, or it's? It is. I saw you post the the first. Yes. The first class. Well, uh, we've been trying to open a barber school on the east side of Mesa because we have students. We had students that were coming all the way from Globe. Mm. And, I mean, opening a school in Globe doesn't seem to be uh, ideal just mm. because Globe is so small. small. But I, we did want it to open something close to that side of town because, I mean, people were driving long distance. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a student that comes all the way from Payson. Mm. And we had students coming from Payson before to our school. So that location is more convenient for them as well. Mm. Uh, we have students coming from Queen Creek and the Santan Valley area. Mm. Um, 
the process of opening that school has been a, a whole headache. <laughs> uh, we actually um, rented this place that it's a very large space, about 3,000 square feet for that school. Mm. Uh, we were wait, waiting on permitting, uh, but we are in County Island over there. Mm. So we use septic and, and yeah. all that. Uh, the permits have been delayed mm. a long, long time. We yeah. were thinking about opening last year in July. Uh. So that long. Um, so we decided to um, to uh, open the school next door from the original spot because um, there was a beauty salon next door. And they seem to be empty most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I went and asked them if they would sell the, sh the, the salon to me. Mm. And they said yes. So... <laughs> We bought the salon. We was tear it, it down. About the same size, or was it's it uh, half the size? Half the size. Yes. Okay. So we're still planning on expanding, but uh, we're waiting for permits. So um, you still have the other spot too. Yes. So, but this spot was ready to go, or you could get moving and opening the, the yes. school. Okay. Yes. And the idea originally was to open the barber school with a beauty uh, barber supply mm -hmm. integrated, mm -hmm. because there is nothing on that side of town. Right. So far yeah. out there, and. Uh, we still have the idea of opening the barber supply store. We do have signage for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just waiting on those permits because the space that we got now is half the size. So mm. it doesn't make sense to open there. Right. Uh, but as soon as we get permits, uh, we're planning on opening a barber supply store. Nice. On that Congratulations. Side of town. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah. So. All right. So you've got a lot of things going on. What What else is happening? <laughs> You sound like you're busy. <laughs> and well, well, how does that work? Do you have a team that you work with that helped you with all of these ventures? Or is it just really you and your husband solo? Or how, how does that work? We have um, on the barber school in Dobson, my mm -hmm. brother. Uh, it's a barber instructor as well. My brother-in-law, Danny, the one yeah. that was our first yeah. student. Yeah. <laughs> and my sister-in-law, she's a barber instructor as well. Awesome. She works as a barber now, but whenever she's needed, she helps with the okay. schools. Okay. So we're a team of four instructors for the school, so we have plenty of help. Yeah. Um, and uh, for the restaurant, we have a business partner that we acquired last year. Okay. Uh, it was a lot of work yeah. to keep up with everything. My husband was going back and forth, and, yeah. and it was just so much because he obviously he needed to make sure that the menu was running the way he set it up and everything. Yeah. Um, but we got a business partner last year, and that has been a life changer. <laughs> yeah, because um, it was uh, hard to do it on our own. Yeah. And that uh, gentleman, he has a lot of experience in restaurant business. He owns multiple restaurants. Yeah. Uh, he runs a very good uh, breakfast place. It's called the Crowned Egg. And I think he has locations in Chandler and Gilbert. Okay. Yeah. What, what is it called? The it's called the Crowned Egg. The Crowned Egg. Yes. That sounds familiar. I think I might have been there a time or two. And the food is really good. Yeah. Yes. Is that the one I think is like Val Vista or something? Or yes, I think, yes. And Williamsfield, somewhere around there? Yep. I yeah. think that's the one. Yeah. Um, I'm not very familiar with the addresses because when I've been there, I don't drive and I'm typically on my phone when I'm not <laughs> driving. So, so I don't even know. You know, I need to Google it to, yeah. to find it. Yeah. But um, yeah, the food is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what advice would you have for, uh, well, for two? Um, you already gave advice about the for barbers to go ahead and you know take that next step to becoming an instructor. Um, but any other advice you would have for current barbers uh, in the industry that you know maybe you see something that should be changed or people should be doing differently? Is there anything that you would give advice to current licensed barbers? I have a lot of advice for current licensed <laughs> barbers. Yes. And, and no judgment. I was, okay. I was a barber too. I'm, I'm, I'm still a barber, right. but I don't work as a barber. But right. we barbers, we tend to be um, to be a little lazy on mm. the on like it, we don't feel like the need of of keep learning. Mm. So don't think you know everything. Nobody knows everything. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So keep learning from other people. You can learn from the barber that you started working at your shop yesterday and from the one that opened the shop and now it's the owner or, or he has, you know, many years in the, in the business. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, that I think uh, it's very good for uh, current barbers, it's uh, don't forget your sanitation procedure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go visit a barber shop sometimes and... <laughs> I wouldn't bring my kids there. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, don't do to others what you wouldn't want them to, to do, do to you. yourself. Yeah. Yes. So so if you wouldn't use that neck duster on your face, 
don't use her on your client. Yeah. Yes. And what would what would you say to um, to current barber students? You know, what advice would you have to them who are really striving just just to get through the process of becoming a barber? Take advantage of every single hour. Yeah. Every single hour counts, and you're paying for every single hour. So if you are in school and there is no haircuts coming in, grab your book, grab your mannequin, go see other students that they're cutting, or go pick on your instructor's brain. I mean, there is so much you can learn and, uh, and use every hour. Yeah. It seems like 1,200 hours because you know how they brought it down from 1,500 to, to 1,200. 1200 yeah. um, since that happened, I see the difference on the students. Uh, mm. Before, my students were like, I'll say 100% because we make sure that if my student is doing an amazing fade, I go and look at and find different things that he might be able to improve or she might be able to improve. Um, sometimes it seems like I'm being mean or picky about it. <laughs> But the thing is that I'm not doing it for me. Yeah. I want you to be like even better. Yeah. And yes, better than me. I want you to be better than me. I yeah. don't I, I don't have a competition. Like there is no competition here. Yeah. Because your clients are going to love you and and I want you to give them the best. And uh, when a student is doing an amazing haircut already, then we start working on time. Mm. How can we cut the time? Because mm -hmm. using all those plastic attachments, I mean, I'm sorry, barbers that use plastic <laughs> attachments, but that it's very, very time consuming. Yeah. We have metal attachments as barbers, professional licensed barbers. Um, clipper recommend and metal attachments should be your way to go if you are trying to go fast. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do very shadowy haircuts, I can still do a clipper recom. <laughs> you don't need the plastic <laughs> attachment. Um, I mean, if, if there is a tool that helps you cut time and if that one plastic attachment is giving you the, the advantage of cutting time, go for it. Yeah. But if you're spending 45 minutes on a haircut because you are afraid of metals, mm. just try, try, because it will take you a couple haircuts to get the hang of it, and then you're going to be faster. Yeah. 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 And what would you say to those who want to, who are interested in getting into the, the industry in, in this day and age? Because it's way different now than it was when you were coming up, uh, even in 2009, when we started in business and, and, and recently, you know, things with the social media and all of that stuff. And, celebrity barbers and all of that what, what would you say to those people who want to get into the, the industry now social media is fake <laughs> <laughs> it is fake nobody posts their ugly haircut and they you have to be an amazing photographer because haircuts look beautiful on the eye yeah. but on the camera they don't look the same you need mm. to buy you know a special camera or a very good phone um but entering the industry at this time it's perfect yeah. If you are comfortable with social media, if you are comfortable with people's skills. Now, remember, a lot of people that follow you on social media not necessarily are going to go visit you in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Because I can follow you from East Mesa and you probably work in Phoenix. I'm not going to go get a haircut in Phoenix. Most male clients go to the barbershop on their way home from work. Mm, yeah. Okay. So who, who's going to go, you know, tired after work. Oh my gosh, I have to drive all the way to North Scottsdale mm -hmm. and I live in Chandler. Yeah. No, I mean, the barber is great. Yes. But I'm sure I can find a barber that is just as great in, in Chandler. Right. So convenience, convenience. Yeah. Yes. So work with your client that you have on your share and just give them everything you have because that client is going to come back. We have clients in the barbershop that we cut their kids first haircut. Yeah. And now they're graduating high school yeah. and I'm, I'm like, how old are you now? <laughs> because kids, and then I have clients that I cut them as little, probably like 12 year old kids. Yeah. And now they bring me their kids. Their kids, yeah. So, so you're, you're dealing with generations. Generations. And so they trust you. Your client that sits on your share, take <laughs> care of him, and he's going to be your client forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it's, um, and it's, it's not just that one haircut, it's you're, you're, you're potentially dealing with the future. future. You know, that, that, that person is going to come. I don't know what how often people get haircuts these days, or I know I go about every two or three weeks, but uh, if that's normal, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the haircut. People yeah. that have uh, shorter haircuts, they go more often yeah. to keep them sharp and clean. Yeah. People that have longer haircuts, they typically take a little, a little longer. Bit longer, yeah. Yes. So cool. So now, when when the barber school is closed, Blanca 
shuts off the lights and closes the door, locks up, and you're out of there. What what does Blanca do? What does Blanca like to do outside of being a, a, a an amazing entrepreneur? Um, if I can go somewhere for the weekend, I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where's your favorite place to go? Um, anything warm. Okay. <laughs> anything warm. Uh, yes. Um, I um. I like to be at home. Yeah. I, I enjoy being home a lot. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a horse property. So oh, wow. this time of the year, yeah. I love being outside and, and I, I like to plant a couple of trees during this time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, um, if I have time to go somewhere for the weekend, I'll go. But mm -hmm. I like tropical. So typically when I'm leaving, I go to florida or you know somewhere that is warm yeah and uh, my favorite thing to do is uh, scuba diving scuba diving so yeah any excuse to go scuba i'll yeah. go <laughs> i was telling my husband honey i thought they have a uh, sea lions in san diego would you go go some scuba there and he's like there's no way i'm gonna get in that water it's too cold for me <laughs> so yeah but i like to be home awesome. i like to be home with my kids and and have dinner with them and mm. And with the family in general, yeah, we like to cook at home a lot. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate you coming by today. We're gonna wrap it up here. And uh, do you have any last final words that you just want to say? Anything that we missed, or uh, anything you wanted to say? I do want to say to everybody: if you think of it, you can do it. Yes, because you wouldn't think of something that is unreachable. So if yeah. you think of it, if you, I have students coming in and say. Oh, I wanted to come to school five years ago. If you think of it, do it. Mm. Do it because later on, you don't know if it's going to be a better time. The best time is now. Now. Whatever you want to do, you can be barbering, you can be going back to college, whatever you want to do. If you think of it, you can do it, definitely. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for those words of wisdom. Thank you for uh, stopping by today, and we certainly appreciate uh, you know, all, all the wisdom, all the knowledge and man, just to see, you know, what's possible, you know, uh, with a husband and wife team uh, working together as a team. That's very inspiring. Right. So uh, hopefully you all who have partners, you know, you can you, you hear this story and see what's possible that you and your partner, you know, once you guys get on the same page uh, of what can be accomplished, you know, serial entrepreneurs now. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to Blanca and, and Manny. And uh, we wish them bo both much success uh, in business and in family. And we thank you all for tuning in today. We're here on the Barber Block podcast. We have real barbers, real people, and we uh, have real talk. And we're here to inspire to share and educate different stories so that you too can continue to press forward in the things that you want to accomplish. Uh, we thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Peace.